Funding for Mastodon Minutes is provided by the Indiana Purdue Student Government Association. On the broadcast today, spring is in the air and spring fling is upon us. We find out why some students decided to go barefoot for the day. An IPFW senior shows off their artistic talents. All of this today on Mastodon Minutes, along with a recap of IPFW sports with Chris Treft and Josh Bancleve. With warmer weather on the way, IPFW is gearing up for its annual Spring Fling celebrations. Hello, I'm Andy Starwich. And I'm Nick Lawrence. Spring Fling events planned and organized by the IPSGA Student Activities Board hopes to build upon the successes of years past. Our very own Tim Zink caught up with Nikki Matthews, president of the SAB. This year's theme for Spring Fling is IPFW Spring Into Action 2011, um, and it encompasses a lot of volunteering and fundraising. Um, the Spring Into Action part is because we want to do—we're doing a blood drive, and we're trying to raise money for earthquake relief in Japan. Um, we're doing the Six Cent Initiative, which is in conjunction with the Circle K um, on campus, um, and that is where we like to raise money for third world countries. And every cent donated um, provides fresh water for people in third world countries and our goal is to flood the union um, and that simply is just whenever you donate some money we'll write your name on a paper water droplet and we'll put it up in our student union and like I said we want to flood the union. Our last fundraiser is Relay for Life um, which is that is for the American um, Cancer Society and it doesn't take place until June but we like to get an IPW team together um, to support the survivors of cancer, the people who've passed away from cancer um, and all of that and so springing into action is just our students taking or our IPW community as a whole taking control and showing that we care. We actually got a late start um, planning spring fling but as far as um, deciding what organizations and what groups and all of the fundraisers and so forth that we wanted to incorporate um, was a no-brainer. Um, and I say that because we've been really trying to start doing more community, um, getting more community involvement. Um, so when it came to planning Spring Fling, we thought this is the perfect time to do it, and this is, you know, this is the, the best time. A complete list of Spring Fling events can be found by following the link on your Facebook page. Well, Nick, that Nelson's chicken's smelling good right about now. It sure does. What a good week. Free chicken and free t-shirts. I don't think we could ask for anything more. We'll also don't forget to vote for the IPSGA student government elections. Voting will pl take place Monday through Saturday at a variety of locations on campus. And could you spend a whole day without your shoes? Well, several students did this past Tuesday as part of the One Day Without Shoes event. Our own Josh Van Cleve reports. Um, it's called One Day Without Shoes, and it's for Tom Shoes. Um, as far as Tom's, it's a one-for-one. One. You buy a pair of shoes, and you give a pair of shoes. Um, the One Day Without Shoes is an international thing, and we're just raising awareness for kids who don't have a choice, who don't even own a pair of shoes and can't afford a pair of shoes, so they can't get to education, or they can't get to water, and they get diseases, and they're from the soil, and infections and stuff. And so bringing it to campus, just so everyone can know what Tom's is, and raise awareness in this way, and just know what's going on out in the world. I think this year we just had better preparation as far as like getting flyers and making sure that we had invitations sent out on Facebook and on the Tom's website and just getting the word out more and posting flyers and um, just we have more people here than we did last year passing out flyers and talking to people as they walk by. It's going really good. It's actually to me I think it's a better turnout than it was last year. Last year it was really hard to get people to take off their shoes um, but we have a lot of people helping out this year um, and we have a lot of people participating so far and so Hopefully as the day goes on, it gets nicer outside. Well, thank you, Josh. And it certainly was a chilly day not to be wearing shoes, but it was definitely for a good cause. Definitely was. Well, moving right along here, years of training and dedication in the arts is on display at the IPFW Senior Art Exposition. Our very own Elizabeth Gephardt reports on this display. The event is for uh, the seniors in the graphic design and photography department. It's opened up to anybody that wants to come, um, but the seniors in the department are the ones who are displaying. It, we have to complete a senior project in order to pass and to move on towards graduation. Um, the event will be jurored um, by a visiting artist, a visiting teacher from another school. 
Um, however, our teachers grade us. I mean, you could place first from the juror, but that doesn't mean that you're going to graduate your pass. Um, our projects range from cookbooks to uh, French Kiss, which is a marketing for um, a made-up perfume, to you know what not to do, which is um, a project about ties and you know the double Windsor. My project is called the Cookbook Project. Um, I took a little bit of the traditional family recipes from my heritage, and I um, put them together in a cookbook with all of the rest of my favorite recipes. And so I designed it so that they were all in three steps, and I took all of the photography for it. So you have a page, and then you have three recipes. Um, I designed the covers, and then I also designed posters. It is downtown at the Allen County Public Library, um, and the show will be up uh, through the first week of May. Come down and see us. Afghan Women Speak, a presentation of poetry and prose from young Afghan women took place last Saturday at the IPFW Neff Performance Hall. The performance featuring Afghan music and a reception was sponsored by the Indiana Center for Middle East Peace and by the IPFW Women's Studies program. The IPFW Institute for Holocaust and Genocide Studies sponsored a screening of This is the Prison Where I Live directed by Rex Bloomstein. You're just looking at, 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 in, a, in a sort of rather simple way at um, what we as human beings have to confront and reflect upon all the time. When are we bystanders? Could we become victims? Who are the perpetrators? The IPFW Student Achievement Award celebration took place last Wednesday, recognizing students, faculty, and group achievement on campus. The year's winners came from a variety of backgrounds in and around the IPFW community. And we have a list of the winners. The student leader of the year is Matthew Bocart. Student org officer of the year is Jacqueline Nasson from the Music Educators National Conference. Student org member of the year is Vanessa Ray from the American Society of Civil Engineers. The student org advisor of the year is Christine Kuznar of the Student Athlete Leadership Team. Also, Joseph Magistri was named the Student Government Member of the Year. Dr. Robert Gillespie was awarded the Student's Choice Award for Teaching Excellence. Jo Dr. George McClellan was given the Award for Service to Students. And the Committee to Diversity Award was awarded to Akrit Sangera. And we were also nominated for IPFW Student Organization of the Year. We would like to extend a big thanks to all of our viewers, the students at IPFW, College, College Access Television, Student Life, and IPSGA for all their support over the past 16 months. That certainly was a nice award to receive. Definitely and speaking was. of a guy everyone's thankful in the room for is Josh Van Cleve with his new sidekick, Chris Treft. Thanks, Andy and Nick. Chris, why don't you start us off with some Don Sports? Thanks, Josh. Let's get started off with the softball girls, who had a great past two weekends, first sweeping Butler University with scores of 3-1 and 10-7. They also went on to sweep the South Dakota State Jackrabbits in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The Lady Dons won the opener 12-5, and then they held on for a 6-4 victory in the nightcap. With the sweep, the ladies move into a two-way tie for second place in league standings at 7-4 in Summit League play while improving to 15-8-1 overall in winning their fifth consecutive game. In addition, Sarah Swanson and Courtney Cronin were named Summit League Player and Pitcher of the Week. Looking ahead, the Lady Don's trying to keep this streak alive as they face Western Illinois in a three-game set this weekend. Double dip coming on Friday, and Saturday is the final game at home. Looks like a good week for the Lady Don's. Let's go to the other side of the diamond, where the men's baseball was not so good. The men had a tough past weekend versus Evansville Purple Aces, being swept with a score of 11 to zip, 4 to 3, and 14 to 6. The Dons bounced back on Tuesday, snapping a four game losing skid in dominating fashion as the Dons toppled the Cougars of Chicago State University, 17 to 5. The Dons have their Summit League opener this weekend as they have two doubleheaders on Saturday and Sunday at Mastodon Field. Switching to men's volleyball, the guys had a home-and-home -home series with MIVA foe Quincy, losing only one set in the series, sweeping the Hawks for their fourth MIVA win of the season. The guys try to keep up their winning ways on the road this weekend, Friday at Lewis, and then Saturday in Muncie versus Ball State. Now let's hit the links with women's golf. Sophomore Alyssa Cherney finished in 21st place to lead the Lady Dons to the 5th place finish at the IPFW Spring Classic at, Spring Classic at Pine Ridge Country Club. The Mastodons posted the team total of 377 in the second round to finish the tournament with a total of 742. As for the men, they have the Adidas Indiana Invitational this weekend down in Bloomington. 
The IPFW men's tennis team fell 5-2 to the IUPUI Jaguars last Friday afternoon in Indianapolis, falling to 8-10 overall and 1-2 in the Summit League. The Dons have two home games this weekend, all both on Friday versus UMKC and Centenary. As for the ladies, they got the weekend off. So That's all we have this week in sports. I'm Josh Van Cleef alongside Chris Treff. Back to you, Andy and Nick. Thank you, Josh, and welcome, Chris, to the news team. And that does it for this week. I'm Nick Lawrence. And I'm Andy Starwich. Thank you for watching Mastodon Minutes, your choice for campus news. As always, we are at your fingertips all day, every day, at facebook.com slash Mastodon Minutes. And on behalf of our entire news team here at Mastodon Minutes, have a great week. More programming from CATV is coming up next. Thanks for watching, everybody.